thank you very much indeed. Uh, and we hope we will hear more from you. And now um, it's my pleasure to introduce Maria Rosa Sabatili, who has traveled a long way to be here with us today. Uh, she's the deputy head of unit for rapid response, Europe, Asia, and the Americas at the Service for Foreign Policy Instruments. And this is an institution that we in the Global South know very little about. So uh, we'd be very interested in hearing from you about how this works in your country and in the EU. And you ha uh, Badia has been working on human rights and governance portfolios. Uh, she has been posted at the EU delegation to China, where she managed a human rights and rule of law EU project. That must have been quite a challenge. Uh, and she's also visiting professor at the European Political and Governance Studies Department at the Burgess campus, and she is a graduate of political science, like many of us around this table. Um, you know, we would really like to know about the rapid response uh, policy instruments, especially on how you bridge the hard security and the so-called human security needs in terms of outreach to other parts of the globe, especially the Global South, uh, humanitarian aid, aid directed for gender equality, and also how you temper that with the budget allocations and, and uh, gender budgeting. Thank you ever so much for, for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and it's a pleasure from Brussels to be here. It's my first time in India, so I'm uh, really, it's uh, really an honor uh, to be with such a panel. It's uh, for me, it's, and I think that there is something common, I see that many of us have been in China it's very strange that many of us have, have served in, in China. So first of all, thanks for the question. And I would just like to make a few general points. The first one is how gender equality is already my colleagues, Ambassador Gosh and uh, Deputy uh, of Mission Elena, have said how important it is for the EU. I mean, for us, is a core value, gender equality. And for us, it's universally recognized as a human rights. So for us, it's very, very, very clear as it's imperative for us for the well-being, for economic growth, for prosperity, uh, good governance, peace and security. So is the basis of a lot of what we are doing and of the, it is important. And for us is so basic that since 1957, when we started in our treaty, there was already equal pay for equal work. So it's from the very beginning that we have it in our DNA, uh, gender uh, equality. And, <clears throat> and you know that what we, uh, uh, we, do, we do best in the EU is to write strategy, right? <laughs> and, uh, and when we have a commission led by women, and you know our president von der Leyen, and what one of our real big objective is a union that is gender equal. equal. And what we, we have done in order to achieve uh, this objective of our uh, presidents is to have a, a strategy 2020-2025 that has a key uh, uh, objective. First of all, ending gender-based bi violence, challenging gender stereotypes, closing gender gaps in the labor market, achieving equal participation across different sectors of the economies, addressing gender pay and pension gaps, uh, closing the gender care gap, which is something that still exists, achieve gender balance in decision making and in politics. And this, uh, uh, this strategy, which is uh, uh, internal for our EU member states, has a complete, uh, has a mirror strategy. That is a strategy that is called the gender action plan that is used for our external policy. And here where uh, our instrument, the foreign uh, uh, the, uh, the instrument for foreign policy enters into the game. And, and your question about what we do and how we, we, we close this, the, this gap. Uh, when, when we work on, uh, on all kind of foreign policy priority of the EU, first of all, we mainstream gender, gender equality everywhere. So th there are not only targeted action on gender, but we have mainstream all over in all our policies. When we are talking about foreign policy, when we are talking about implementing the international dimension of internal EU policy, gender is always there, in addition to targeted action. 
strategic action that we have seen in peace and security, that we have seen in many uh, very concrete actions. For example, I can bring some example of what we are doing on demining and the role of women in, 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 uh, in this very uh, specific and sensitive uh, sector. And something uh, that we are also uh, working is around the globe, but we've had a big program in Asia and also in Latin America, is about women empowerment. And uh, the, uh, our services has put a disposal uh, instruments in order to work with the UN women on the uh, women economic empowerment principles. So our role is to bridge, to bridge and to, and to see how we can uh, uh, close the gaps that we see in implementing our foreign policy and implementing our external assistance of also. But internally, I mean, and one thing that it's, uh, it's extremely important is that when we talk it about um, gender equality inside and outside, inside we have done a lot. And you know that one of the objectives also of our, uh, of our president is to have a fully balanced commission, 50-50, not only at the highest level, but everywhere cross-cutting the whole commission. And uh, the, the, the commission is putting into place it also uh, some, uh, some instruments in order to increase the presence of, of women uh, uh, as civil servants in the commission, but also to make sure that these women, they also do a career. And for example, there is a, a program called the Female Talent Development Program that is targeting women officials that want to make a, a, a career. Um, this is just a few examples of what we do internally and externally. One thing that I wanted to also uh, uh, cover very quickly is India. And India as I'm a, a strong believer of leading by example. And here we have something that is amazing because you are leading by example, but also in the region how India can become a role example on gender equality in the region. And this is something very important because coming from far away talking about gender equality is fantastic, it's great, we are here, we share experience. But having a country like India having this role in the region is much more effective in my opinion. So it's, uh, it's, uh, for us it's uh, an honor to be working with India also on these, on these issues because of the spillover effect that these can have in, in, the, in the neighboring uh, uh, country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, you really flagged a very, very important issue, especially for India's presidency, the SDGs, and especially uh, equality, the goal five of the SDGs. And you've been talking about women-led development at all our fora. Uh, thank you for flagging that. And, and I think there are, there's a lot of uh, commonalities here that one can look to working towards. And thank you for making the, making the journey all the way here to New Delhi.